G'day, Dave James here from Wasp Multibeam. I've previously made a few videos on Wasp CDX program, which is the program that we include with Wasp Multibeam when you purchase the system. And today I'm going to go and next step and show you the Wasp uh, system running together with Time Zero Professional. So in the background here, we're currently running with CDX, which I love for its simplicity. It's great for those users that users that just want uh, the core features that WASP offers in terms of its ability to generate C4 mapping, but, uh, backscatter, these sort of features. But what happens if you need a little bit more out of the system? If you want maybe more functionality, what happens if you want to do more with your marks and data? And uh, so let's take a look at Time Zero Professional because the TZ Pro program gives you that uh, extra flexibility to use WASP uh, above and beyond what you can do with our CDX program. Here we are, we're taking a look now at Time Zero Professional version 4. Uh, just a little side note, Time Zero Professional version 5 will be released October 1st, 2023, so look out for that. There are some good upgrade opportunities there for existing clients. Uh, if you're looking for a great phishing program, then I do suggest you get in touch with your local Time Zero uh, distributor or dealer. Right, so the navigation tab. now. With Time Zero, you could choose exactly how you use your workspaces. So along the top here, we have navigation, planning, fishing, etc. These are what we call workspaces. They are fully customizable. Um, and then we've got a um, toolbar and a ribbon. So toolbar down the side here, fully customizable, and a ribbon along the top, again, fully customizable. And again, on, uh, on the right-hand side here, a nav bar, again, fully customizable. So you can make the system as complicated or as simple, simplified as you uh, wish, and uh, there's so great things we can do with our WASP data. So let's have a look. So first of all, I tend to not involve WASP in the navigation workspace because I use that for my um, literal navigation from point A to point B, and I don't like to clutter up my screen too much, each to their own. Um, the planning workspace, that's where I tend to have, it, have my, um, my additional data. So I've got some shape files laid over the top here, uh, if you're in New Zealand. Um, and I could, if I wanted to, display all of my fishing marks. So uh, if I go all... There's all my fishing layers, and I could show my fishing layers if I wanted to active layers. I could choose some on or some off. Um, for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to hide all of that. Um, then I have my fishing workspace. So um, I actually myself tend to not use the planning workspace for fishing activities. I really like the fishing tool because I've got easy ways to turn on and off my different options over here, um, select filters, etc. So Again, each to their own, but you probably don't need planning and fishing. That's up to you. Um, the only reason you may want planning is if you're downloading weather forecasts, although you will see over here I create my own special weather tab, so we can show you a bit of that too. So next option is uh, 3D Cube. Um, this looks great in a um, showroom environment. I'm not sure how much value it gives at sea, but hey, if it gives you value, great. Um, so it's, it's a, an oblique sort of grid view. Uh, to be able to see the, um, the ship's um, map data, and you can choose whether you want to see it from the bow or stern, from the side, whatever it may be. Then we've got a high-resolution bathy. So what I've done here is I've, I've actually created a new workspace using the fishing cube, and I've called it high-res bathy because I've actually, in my settings here, I've chosen it to use the 3D high-resolution database. So in your country, you may have the option to purchase static databases, and I think they're a great place to start, even if you have WASP, it gives you an idea of where there's some detail. So if I was to show you, if I was only using my CMAP database, that's what my seafloor looks like in this area. However, we've purchased the high resolution database. Um, now, if I wanted to, I could also show my user database, and that's my WASP data over the top. But I'm not going to use that. I'm going to keep them separate for the purposes of showing you the difference. So. At this point, some people say, ooh, I don't need to purchase a wasp. Look how good this detail is. But we will show you that uh, as, as good as it is, it is nothing compared to the ability uh, that wasp provides you to, to map the seafloor. So what I've then created is I've created another option here, again using the fishing style workspace. And in this case, I've configured it so that I can only see in my PVG the data that I've um, mapped myself, in this case from my WASP multi-beam. So this is as if we're traveling at sea right now. Uh, this is data that was taken off a, off a sea trial, uh, live recording at the time. So 
we record everything with WASP um, uh, if we want to. Um, there's, a, there's a way we can record the data and replay it. And so it's as if we're live at sea now. Um, so this is this is the sort of mapping that you could expect yourself um, with your with your WASP multi beam and your time zero. So Bathy, bathymetric is the shape of the seafloor, and we're representing those by colours. So you can see there's a colour toolbar on the side over here. So 10 metres is uh, around about, uh, um, and we're in metres. We could be in feet or fathoms. 10 metres is around about red. You know, we're going to our yellows at about 15. At about 20, we're going to our greens, and then to our blues on the 20 to 25 metre depths. So you can actually change all of that. So if you want to click auto, you can have a manual. And I can actually set a specific depth range. So if I really want to target a specific depth range. A tip here is you can use the scroll wheel on your trap ball to make minor adjustments. So there, if you want to highlight a particular depth. Um, and then we have a discrete mode. And in discrete mode, you can literally choose your own colors. So if you prefer to have um, uh, particular colors, so some of our clients have said in the past they'd like to maybe have white on the shallowest and white on the deepest, then you can simply come in over here, edit, and you can choose your color, and you can make it white. Uh, you can add more colors into here. So I'm not going to dwell too much on this, but you can add as many colors within reason as you want to into this. You can then drag those ranges as well. So if I move this, you can see it changes over here. So that's discrete mode uh, if you like to customize. Also important to know, once you've chosen a discrete mode that you're happy with, you can click on the preset, manage preset, record current position, give it a name. I'm going to call mine test one. Close. Now I will make some changes. I'm not worried too much about how it looks. I'm going to go presets, manage presets, record current preset, test two. Now I can go back to my auto mode. I'm going to change to manual. This time I'm going to do a manual color range. And I'm going to call this manage preset. And this one, record current preset. I'm going to call this one cray. So this is where it becomes really powerful. I can simply, to choose my favorite um, shading options, click Presets, Test 1, automatically changes. Presets, Test 2, automatically changes. Presets, Number 3. So it doesn't matter whether you're saving your presets of color shading or whether discrete shading, you can save as many of those presets as you want. So why would you do that? Well, for example, if you're constant, constantly working a particular depth, like so let's say you're crayfishing in shallower water and you know um, you're operating in a very small depth range, you could save that preset, so you optimize your colors for that fishing, uh, and then save that preset as a name. So what it means is less messing around when you arrive at your fishing ground. You don't have to be playing, it, playing with your ranges on your colors, you can simply go presets and you, you, you can just select the one you want. So you might have uh, uh, lobster uh, 15 fathoms and bang, you're into that uh, shortcut option. So that's really, really powerful. Get good feedback on that option. So this is our bathymetric. So this is showing the seafloor relief by color um, for depth. And another option I've shown is backscatter. Now to use backscatter, you need to have purchased the WASP backscatter license. Um, assuming you have purchased that license, then you could show backscatter in here. Um, again, you could have auto backscatter. So we're looking here at the decibels. So you can see the different decibel ratings represent different um, seafloor hardnesses. And if you prefer to do your own, you could go to manual and you can adjust your, your thresholds to wherever you deem them to be. So effectively, we're seeing harder and softer seafloor. So in this instance, um, our harder seafloor is coming through as the red sort of color, and our, and our um, weaker is coming through as the ye yellowish sort of color. Again, we have a discrete mode. So if you prefer to have your own discrete mode, so I can go presets, manage preset, record current preset. So I'm going to call this uh, lobster BS. So if I came back on another day, and let's say I was 
have different settings on and I want to use my lobster backscatter settings. I just come to presets, lobster bears, and I'm straight to that option. So you can see just how powerful this can be. It doesn't matter with using your shortcuts up here, your presets for um, the seafloor relief, the, the, the bathymetry, or whether you're using it for backscatter. Um, so this is really, really handy for those people that are doing multiple types of fishing. Maybe you, you, you fish for multiple species in multiple depths on, on, on different fishing grounds. So that can save you a lot of time and hassle. You only have to optimize it once um, and then go to presets, manage presets, record the current position and um, save that in there. Um, the other option here we have, I've created a screen called Dual Wasp. So in this case, I've got um, my... Uh, bathymetry on this side of the screen, the left hand side, and I've got my backscatter on the right hand side. Now I've got contour lines over here. If I don't want contour lines, I can turn those contour lines off. If you want to have dual backscatter, which I have on the right hand side here, and I'm going to turn my terrain shading on there, make it easier to see. So you see, even though I put terrain shading on the land, you can see that it also gives me terrain shading on the seafloor. So I'll show you again if that's not turned on, terrain shading off terrain shading on. So up to you which you prefer. Um, some people don't want any terrain shading on. Uh, your choice. So if you wanted to have dual uh, backscatter and um, which is on this side and bathymetry, you cannot do this in CDX. It is not possible. So in CDX you would have to alternate between backscatter and bathymetry. In time zero you can have both. In fact if you wanted to have four different windows with four different things you could. So it's that flexibility that time zero offer. And then some of the other options that you can get. So this is WASP is viewed for water column information coming through. So we can see our fish targets. And these would only be visible if you've paid for the uh, water column target license when you purchase your WASP multi-beam. Um, so if you've got a Generation 3 system, uh, WASP Generation 3, everything I'm talking about today relates to the current uh, third generation product, uh, you would need to purchase that license. This is the section view, so port on the left-hand side, starboard on the right-hand side. So that's very, very uh, wide coverage, 120 degrees. It's almost 3 to 1 aspect ratio, so if you're in 100 meters of water, almost 300 meters across is the theory. Um, and then we have multi-sounder. So this could be viewed, actually, if we want to, in the options. Um, you can have bottom lock, bottom zoom. Uh, you could uh, have it as a... 5-beam sounder if you prefer, or you could have it just as a traditional single-beam echo sounder. So very, very powerful. You've got rewind function. You can right-click and you can create a mark there if you want to, um, and put a mark on your chart. So quite powerful. I'm not going to dwell too much on the sounders today. Um, so I guess you're probably wondering, okay, when you purchase your WASP but doesn't have all of these options, how do we create them? So let's have a crack at that now. So what you do is you come to the top right-hand side of your screen, and you will have a little plus symbol here. You click on that plus. Now, you choose what you're going to have. So do you want a single screen, a two-way split, three-way split, or a four-way? Now, I'm going to choose a single screen. So you choose that first. So that's yellow or gold, whatever you'd like to say, is single. If I chose there's two-way, three-way, four-way. I'm going to choose single, and then you choose what you want. So I don't want navigation, no, 3D cube, fishing. That's the one that I want. So I'm going to click fishing, and then I can change the name over here. So I can call it whatever I want. I will call it test one. And now the new workspace. I can move that workspace around too. So if I want to bring it to pride of place at the front, I can. Um, at the moment, I've got all my data on here, so I'm just going to click User Objects, Visible Objects, None. So I don't have that cluttering on my screen. So some of the cosmetic things I do, if you don't like the satellite photos, um, you can turn those off over here from the drop-down. So let's have a look at some of the ribbon options. So if I click the Configure Tool option over here, or sorry, on the Toolbar option over here, what I always do is I always put my 3D orientation over on this side, and I put it right at the top because it's really important. You could put a below sensor on if you want to, but uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've got my, uh, where are we? Let's have a look here. Do, 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 do. My 
my pan. There I am. I'm going to put my pan at the top. So there are plenty of options. Everything you see on the left-hand side is available to add to this toolbar. Uh, everything that's on the right-hand side is already on the toolbar. So you can have a look through. There's various different options of pick and choose. So if you want to put boundary information on, you can. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, what I do like to do is have my select tool on. I normally put that across. Let's have a look what else I want. Yep, that'll do me. Oh, I could put my delete tool across. That's pretty handy too. So my toolbar is updated. Now, if I didn't want some of this information here, because look, it's quite complicated now. I click it again. So let's say what we don't want. Um, I don't think I need my zoom in and zoom out because I just use my scroll wheel on my um, trackball. My boundary area, um, I don't really want that on. Contour lines, no, nah, I don't want those on. Do, do, do. So my track, no, I don't want that. There you go, so close. And you can see my toolbar now looks more simplified. So you simply have what you want or don't want on that bar. So every single time you create a new workspace, you need to create your toolbar. Remember that. So if you've modified this one, if you go and create a new new workspace, you, you need to go and redo that um, that toolbar. So let's have a look at maybe creating a different option now. So we're going to go new workspace. This time around, I'm going to go a bit more complicated. I'm going to go four-way split. And now I can choose what I put on there. So yeah, I'll put one navigation into the top window. And then maybe I'm going to put in my sectional view and in my water column view and my side scan view. So now you can see I've got a four-way split coming through um, on here. If you don't want a workspace, I say, oh, no, I don't really want this one, simply right-click on it and delete. And it's gone. Create a new workspace. I want to say, oh, I want to have a three-way split. So what I want to have is navigation on this side, and then I want to have maybe my 3D cube and my what are column targets? There you go. So you've you've instantly made a, an option. Now bear in mind that when I click on the screen, if it's got the gold color around it, that's the selected page. So I'm going to just visible objects none. So if I look at this toolbar that's on the side here, and now I click on this side, can you see the toolbar's changed? So whichever screen you click on has a different toolbar. So you can. You have the opportunity to go in there and choose what you're going to add or remove from the toolbar. So that's, that's really important. So let's have a look now. If I wanted to change the names come through as custom, I right-click, I go Edit, I highlight over this, and I'm going to call that Test 2. Validate, and there's my name Test 2. So I've created a second workspace. Okay, let's have a look at doing a third workspace. I'm going to add, this time I'm going to choose the fishing tool. I'm going to call this one Backscatter. Backscatter Hardness, so it's a much longer name. You can see it's not too ideal to have long names, but I just wanted to differentiate it from my other backscatter that I already have. So again, here I'm going to choose here my visible objects on none. I'm going to choose my satellite photos off. So I'm scrolling in on my fishing ground. Now, my backscatter is not actually showing at the moment. So if I want to display my backscatter, there's some things I need to do. So what I can do is click on the chart at the top and change to backscatter. You can either view backscatter or depth shading on a single view. You can't view both on, on a single view at the same time. So there's my backscatter information. I'll just zoom in so we can see it. And I could choose to have contour lines on or off. I'm not going to have them on. I can have relief on or off. Over here, I can come and do my configure tools again. So again, like I said, 3D orientation, I'll bring that across. And I'm going to use my pan, bring that to the top. Let me show you why I do that. And I'll just turn off, take off some other things we don't need here. All right, so I'm going to zoom in. The reason that I put these 
uh, the 3D orientation. Can you see that at the moment it's, it's blank? So I'm going to right click on my screen and I'm going to go 3D view. So now I've got a 3D oblique view. I can turn my contour lines if I want to or off. Now, if I click on mode, I'm going to go head up. So now I'm behind my ship. So what's important here is that uh, if I come to my um, exaggeration, I can put my exaggeration as much as I want. Something's, nothing's happening here. And the reason that is because in my options, if I go to options, I need to make sure there's an option here, display bathymetry in 3D. Really important. If that's not turned on, you won't get any depth of view to your 3D. So you can see the difference that's now made in my, in my ability to see the seafloor. So the reason I put the pan tool is that I can now pan. You see when it's gold, and if I click 3D orientation, it goes gold. Now I can spin. So basically, as soon as you release, it goes back to pan mode. So I can pan along, find an area I want to have a look at. And then if I would like to spin my uh, myself around on the view there, 3D orientation, and you can spin yourself around that view. So at the moment, I've called this one backscatter hardness. If I was happy with those settings, I'll just change us back to 2D. If I was happy with those settings, I could simply go right click up here and go save display settings. And so that's now saved into my profile. Let's say I decided, no, I don't want to use that for backscatter. That's no problem. I come in here and I'm going to go edit and I'm going to now call this one Bathy 2. Instead of being in backscatter mode, I can click my drop down, depth shading, there's my bathymetry, I want to put my contour lines on, there's my contour lines on. Now, I am now seeing some conflicting data. Can you see how I've got this poor data in the background, and yet I've got good data over here? Because in my PBG setup, I've got my 3D chart database on, so turn that off. So let's talk about these options. What do these mean? Because this is quite critical when you set it up. PBG. You can show the 3D, so let's show the 3D chart only. So that's the CMAP chart. That's the bathymetry data from the CMAP chart, which is pretty poor because it's a navigation chart. Makes sense. 3D high resolution database. That's a high resolution database that we've purchased. And you can see that it's got reasonably good level of detail. Then I've got imported database and I've got nothing here. Why not? Well, and I've got 3D user database. So 3D user database is the data that I've generated myself on board this vessel, whether it's from a WASP multi-beam or maybe you've got a single beam echo sounder, that information is going to come through and display on here. So why the imported 3D? Well, that's if a friend gives you data. So if another third party vessel says, here's some WASP data or some single beam data and you import it, and it just gives you the ability to see what you've generated yourself or not. So if I clicked imported database and I saw some other data on the screen, it would show me what was made with my own vessel versus some data that was given to me by a third party or another vessel. So what you always want to do is make sure that you set your PVG settings to only be user database when you want to show your WASP data. doesn't matter if you're showing the backscatter or you're showing the bathymetry. You only want to see user 3D database. Remember, if you can't see this little PBG icon here, click on the tools over here. I will I will remove it so that you can't see it. So let's say, right, it's not there. How do I change it? Click on the configure ribbons, go find the PBG. Again, everything on the left hand side is not currently available on this um, ribbon at the top here. I can simply click it across and you will see it's not there now, but watch this close. There it is now. In the same way, maybe you don't need all of this information up here. Maybe you click, I don't really want roots. I'm not using roots. I'll take roots off. Targets. Uh, targets are like your AIS and your ARPA and that sort of thing. So if you're not using radar or AIS or anything on this boat, we'll take those off. Uh, we don't have a radar on board. We'll take them off. So ownership, I tend to leave that there. Charts, I tend to leave. User objects, leave. And mode, leave. Uh, the reason I leave them is if we look on the mode, that gives us our options to do north up or head up, gives us our option of 2D or 3D views. 
Um, it gives us the ability to do bathy exaggeration. So I'll put us back into 3D, and you can exaggerate the bathy to look uh, even more exaggerated. Tend not to do it with Wasp, because Wasp is really good at showing the seafloor for what it really is. Um, and then you've got your day, dusk, um, night modes, that sort of thing. So I tend to leave uh, that, that uh, we very much should leave that mode option there. User objects, uh, you're really going to want that if you show all of your marks and things. So if you want to see um, your particular marks um, on the screen, you can add all of that data on. Um, what else? Uh, under your chart, so here you choose which chart you're viewing. So um, you, you're going to want that on there, your terrain shading. Do you want terrain shading on or off? So there's terrain shading on my seafloor, off. Um, depth shading, do you want to have depth shading on or off? So you can have contours only if you wish. Uh, you can have no terrain shading, so that's just contours. Um, or I tend to run depth shading, terrain, and probably tends to run contours not on, but that's up to you if you want contours on. If you wanted to, you see your fish targets, assume you have fish targets, you click this option here and it shows the fish targets. Again, to see backscatter or to see the fish targets, you need the water column target license, or in the case of backscatter, the backscatter license. Something else that's important on a navigation toolbar, if I just click this open, there is a tool you can find called that allows you to show the difference between whether you're mapping with your multi or single beam. Look, I personally recommend that um, if you're going to be using your WASP to be mapping the seafloor, you're better not to have any other acoustic devices, so any other sonars, sounders, current indicators, uh, that sort of thing operating, because they, they could possibly interfere with your WASP signal. But I'm also pragmatic and understand that's not always possible, so um, I'll leave that to you. But if you want to have the best quality mapping you can get with the WASP, it stands to reason if you turn off any other acoustic devices, it will put you in the best position to, to give, get your best quality mapping uh, without any possible um, acoustic interference. Um, if you're going to be using um, more than one sounder on the boat, you might decide that you're going to map the PBG, so that's personal bathy generator. Um, are you going to get your, your data from your multi-beam, or are you going to get it from your single beam? So if we go to single beam, what it means is that it will take the data from your other sounder. So you can see here I've stopped mapping in the, in the background, and the reason I've stopped mapping there is because I've selected single, so I need to go to multi. So quite often when people say, oh, my WASP's not mapping, uh, this can be it. You've chosen single beam instead of multi beam. Again, if you've only got one uh, multi beam uh, sounder and no other acoustics on board, that's going to be easy. You don't have to worry about that. So, PBG on or off. So, if I, um, I'll just wait until the boat comes onto the screen here. So, if I decide um, I want to see the acoustic data coming through, like maybe from my, my, my sounder, um, probably just turn that gain up a bit there. Um, if I want to see this information coming through, but I don't want to be um, having all of my, sorry, back to Bathy 2, I don't want to be having all of my um, database being updated, maybe it's a rough day, uh, then what I can just choose is this one off here, so now it won't, it'll stop updating my database. So you can see the vessel's still transiting now, but I'm not mapping. If I want to map again, click here, whoops. Try again, click here, and it'll start mapping the seafloor again now. There you go. Uh, you can actually also, there's many ways to skin the cat when it comes to, um, to, to WASP. So I can click down over here. So one of the options will be, oh, there it is, PBG. So this option here. So if I click that off, you can see it's linked off. Click it on again on. So in the case of um, any of the icons that are gold are active. So I want to center on my ship. There we are, center on my ship. So there are various um, shortcuts you can um, you can you can program for time zero. I'm going to just look at the nav ribbon first of what I can put onto there. So there's all sorts of sensor information here. So if you choose sensor. Um, some of this information can come from WASP, so you can add any sort of data to the, the toolbar on the side. So 
So that multi-beam, I've added a second one just to show you where to find that. So I'll go remove, remove. So if I want to add that plus multi-beam, and that's really handy. So if I want to stop transmitting, I will click this TX and it will stop the signal where we are now. So it becomes pretty clear now why I like the phishing workspace as our template, because I've got the preset option that I can choose to quickly change my settings. And um, I've also got access to turn things like my contour lines on or off quickly, my depth shading on or off quickly, terrain shading on or off. Uh, I also like some other handy tools. You can see down here I've got this little events button, which you may not have. So I'll just remove it to show you how to add it. Right click on anything you don't want on your toolbar. So if you see anything that's superfluous, you can remove it. And what I quite like to add is plus. And I'm looking for, if you look through the options here, one called events. And there it is there. I'm going to move it down. You can actually have it on the screen if you prefer, so on the actual page. So instead of being on the nav bar, you can actually leave it out here undocked. It can be pretty handy while you're laying pots, for example, when you're crayfishing. So whenever you press any of these options, it's going to drop a mark where you are. So see the, the button here? Now here's a tip. See it says event number 37. For me, I find that quite annoying, that text. So what I'm going to do is click on my user objects. Um, I'm going to go down to options. Brings me into my options here. And under my event labeling, instead of being prefix, I'm going to change that to depth. So now when I drop a mark, I'll drop a blue triangle. It drops the depth at that point. And that's pretty handy. So when you're fishing, you can see straight away what the depth of that... Um, below that waypoint. So I'll do it again now. There's another one there. There's another one there. Now if you don't like these symbols, you can click on the little I. And then you could choose what you want to change. So you can see here orange circle, orange circle at the top. I'm going to change that to, I'll change it to a flag and I'm going to make it yellow. So now you can see I've got a yellow flag. So very, very easy to change these shortcuts. Um, it's also worth knowing you can program in keyboard shortcuts for these as well. So uh, on your programmable keyboard, um, sorry, on your well, on a programmable keyboard or on a regular keyboard, on the regular keyboard where you've got your keys, the, the numeric keys out to the right hand side, the naught, one, two, three, four, five, they actually repli replicate these. So if I click on this I, that's the naught on your keyboard. That's the one on your keyboard, two, three. So if you also want to put a mark down, in my case, I'm going to put a mark. I'm going to put a zero by pressing zero on the keyboard now. And there you go. It's dropped a, a mark. If I press number one on my keyboard, it's dropped a different mark. Number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's really, really handy to drop those marks really quickly. Otherwise, as I say, you can purchase something like an Elgato Stream Deck, which is a customizable keyboard, and you can program those keys in too. You probably want to talk to your WASP dealer about helping you with that. So I guess this shows you now the benefit with Time Zero is that I can combine all of that these capabilities, more advanced marks, tracks, so... If I want to do something with these marks, there's all sorts of wonderful tools. I'm not going to dwell too much on them, but I'll just show you a couple of really cool things you can do. So I'm going to choose a select option here. So now I've got the select option. You can right click on select. I can make it free selection. So I can zoom in here and I want to say this. Do, 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 do. So those three marks are now selected. Right click on them. Mark symbol. I can change them all to be a particular color. So you get the picture. I could change the layer they're in, right click, and I could assign them to a different layer. So in terms of what you could do with your data, correlated against your WASP mapping becomes very, very powerful. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is, is, is why uh, having Time Zero Professional with WASP can be so um, advantageous. The other thing, of course, I don't have on here right now, um, radar, etc. but if you... Um, if you have radar, then you can start to obviously combine all of that into the single system. And Time Zero Professional is very, very um, uh, capable in terms of all the different sensor offerings they have. Check out their website or talk to your local dealer. But really, uh, the system, you can add echo sounders, 
you, uh, into the system so they can be viewed in these workspaces as an echo sounder or as a radar. You could do radar overlay, um, all the AIS functions. So it becomes very, very powerful as a, um, as a phishing and navigation tool. Um, the last thing I was going to say is that um, if you have uh, two different skippers and they, their, their requirements are quite varied, it is very, very easy to set up different user profiles for Times Zero Professional. So I'm just going to get rid of Bathy2. We don't want this now. Delete. And I'm going to get rid of uh, Test1. Delete. Get rid of Test2. Delete. So if I'm happy with this for Skipper 1, I'm going to click on Time Zero at the top of the screen. I'm going to go find this here, Save UIAS. I highly recommend everybody does this. Uh, at this point, it brings up a, um, a, a stares you to My Time Zero. I prefer to scroll up and go to Desktop. And then I'm going to call this one uh, Skipper 1. Save. So basically on my desktop now, you'll find in the background here, I've got a shortcut, Skipper 1, Settings. I'm just going to go back to my Time Zero. Now, I'm just going to make it really simple. I'm going to take out some options. So Skipper, so number two, he doesn't want the 3D cube. He doesn't want the fishing workspace. He doesn't want the, maybe he wants, Dual wasp, but he doesn't want to have the high res bathy. He doesn't want to have the wasp bathy. He doesn't want the water columns. He doesn't want the section. He doesn't want the multi sounder. Doesn't want the weather. Doesn't want the ocean. No. Right. So this is what he wants, and he might have maybe he's customized all of his. Um, his, his toolbars, or the dealer has uh, uh, toolbars and the ribbons, and and so forth. And we're going to save that, save UIAS. Again, we're going to go and find desktop. And on the desktop, we're going to call this Skipper 2. Save. So we've now found that we've got a different uh, option here. Skipper 2 settings is over here. So what this will mean is that if we open up the Time Zero, and I'll show you that in a second, if we open up Skipper 1, it'll open up with one profile. If we open up Skipper 2, it'll open with a different profile. So they will look like almost completely different setups. One's going to be really, really simplified like this, and the other one is going to be more more um, capable and complex like the, the, the program we had before. So let's do that. I'm going to go exit the program. So skipper number one. Takes about 30 seconds to open the program. There you go. So the skipper number one has all of the capabilities that we originally had. And while I'm here, I'm going to quickly show you the difference between if we look at high res Bathy. So this is an area near lookout point. So we see this is the data from a static database. And now we look at the same area. So the high res information, you can see that it's got some detail, but it doesn't have the same level of detail as the WASP. It's quite important, so if we maybe come down here a bit, you can see it's missing. There's just nothing out here where we've got these rocks. So that's the secret to WASP, showing you what's really there. Um, the other thing I was going to show you before we go is... Uh, if we have data that we no longer want to keep, so up here, uh, it was a bit rough when we did the C trial. I've got a bit of break up on the turn up here. So if I decide I don't want this data, what you want to do is make sure on your toolbar, 
you have an option here called delete PBG points, this one on. Now my one is on over here, but you can notice I cannot access it. Why can't I access it? The reason it is because we are actually currently mapping. So I need to turn off my PBG first by clicking that. See it's not gold anymore, no more PBG mapping. Now you'll see I have the option to edit. So I'm going to come up over here, and this is really, really handy. Click on the delete PBG points, see it goes gold. Select the area that you would like to remove, and there you go. Couldn't be easier. So any data you want to get rid of, so if I say down here, I, I don't want this data where we did this turn, and it's gone. Nice and simple. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is I'll just uh, shut this program down. And we're going to open up a Skipper 2 now. So while that's opening, just to point out, rather than using your TZ Professional icon to start up, if you've created desktop shortcuts like I have, you'd want to open from the desktop shortcuts. And that basically would mean that every time you go back to the original settings that you saved. Um, you also need to remember that if you make any further changes, so if I open up Skipper 1 like I am now, and I make any changes, I'll show that to you shortly, you want to make sure that you re-save over the top of it. So we'll look at that. Um, otherwise, if you don't, it's always going to open up if you use these at back to a time and a place, so those settings that I saved earlier, if that makes sense. Here we are. So now I've got my simplified menu. So if, if this chap now decides, no, the skipper wants to have an extra function, I can click the plus, and he can say, no, he wants to have the, he's decided he wants to have the planning, the, sorry, the fishing workspace in there after all, and he wants to have full screen Bathy, so we'll call it Bathy, and he doesn't want the satellite, he doesn't want to have his marks on there, so we'll get rid of the marks, doesn't want to have the satellite, sorry, try that again, none, doesn't want to have the satellite photos, so we'll turn those off. But he does want to have the terrain shading, turn that on, and he does want to have the contour lines. And again, PBG, make sure we turn off the imported, make sure we turn off the 3D database. Um, all we want to have is our user data. There you go. And now he's happy. So, yep, that's what he wants. Don't forget to come in here, right click, save display settings, right, happy days. And now he wants to keep those settings for the future, so we need to go time zero, save UIAS, go find the desktop. And this was skipper number two, so I could look in here for skipper number two. I could, if I want to, do a, a new desktop a, a new desktop icon, but I'm going to save over skipper number two, save. It already exists. Do you want to replace it? Yes, and it is saved. Um, something else that I'll show you, which is pretty handy, if you do want to share data between different vessels from, um, maybe you want to share with some friends a bit of uh, um, bathymetric data, you come to time zero, you go to import export, you go to export data, now, the top section data, that's all your marks and tracks and that sort of thing, but in this case, we're going to choose to export the TZ, the time zero PBG data. Next. And then select what you want to, disport, to export. So I only want to send my own data. I don't want to send any of my imported data that another boat might have given me. Um, so, And what do I want to send? Uh, yep, I want to send backscatter as well. So make sure that's ticked if you want to share it. Now, this is a really handy one. If, if I, all I want to do is share what's on the screen, so I might have a huge database, but I say, let's do it again. If I come in and I say, look, I want to share, well, look, yeah, Bethy, if I want to share this data with somebody, but all I want to do is share this area, I can zoom in, time zero, import, export, export data, next, Time zero PBG data, next. Make sure I've got the user database on, ignore the imported. I want to turn on my backscatter. This one is very handy. Restrict export to the area being displayed on the screen. So if I go next, it will now ask me, 
what I want to call it, so I can give it a name, save, and it'll end up as a file in my computer, which I can then share on a USB stick. But critically, because I selected, if I go back, because I selected this restrict export to displayed screen, he won't get, the person won't get my full database. All they will get is what's on my screen right now. So it's pretty handy if you're happy to share a particular area, but you don't want to share your whole database. So look, I could keep going and talk for hours on Time Zero Professional. There are so many cool um, features and functions and everything in there. I think it's really important that if you're interested in TZ Pro, you understand that not only do you need the Time Zero Professional software, you also need to purchase the TZ PBG module, the Personal Mathy Generator module, which allows us to create maps of the seafloor, our own maps using um, a position and depth. And then if you're using WASP, you also need to purchase a WASP, a, a TZ WASP module from Time Zero, from the dealer. Um, you will need some charting. Uh, Time Zero have got some exciting new charting coming soon, something to watch out for, TZ Maps. Um, and then in addition from WASP Multibeam, obviously you will need the WASP Multibeam system. You will need to purchase our WASP uh, TZ Pro interface license. And um, if you want the functionality, to like back backscatter, water column targets, or side scan module, you'll need to purchase those additionally too. Um, so that does it for today. Um, if you have any more questions, I recommend you get in touch with your WASP uh, and um, Time Zero distribu distributor and dealer, and um, they'll be sure to help you out. Uh, I'll finally say I haven't dwelled any on any of the um, the. Uh, technical aspects of WASP multi-beam. So I'll just show you time zero, options, and then here I've got multi-beam sounder. Look, I think um, if you're playing with any of these settings in here, you need to be really, really careful and know what you're doing because uh, they can have a bearing and adverse um, effect on the performance of the system. Uh, so I would encourage you to have your dealer help work through, your installer help work through, um, making sure these settings are right inside here, and then probably stay away from them. I think everything else that's um, that's accessed through the toolbars and ribbons is um, is perfectly fine, give you great performance. But um, unless you really know what you're doing, uh, I wouldn't go deep under the hood because um, you can compromise how the system performs. So um, sorry, long-winded. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, please share your feedback. I don't profess to be the world's biggest guru. Um, I'm sure that uh, many other people have some great ideas, things I've missed. Uh, don't be afraid to share with us, share with the group. Um, maybe even take some recordings of your own boat, uh, your time zeros, and um, share them with us. Thanks very much for listening. All the best.